I'm Robin Gavon, and I'm the fashion critic for the Washington Post. I'm writing for a general audience, but because it's the Washington Post, I also recognize that it's an audience that tends to be particularly attuned to politics and culture. And uh, it's a very uh, well-educated, thoughtful audience. So I know that I have to be on my toes, because they'll keep me honest. When I first came to the Washington Post, I wasn't really that interested in that connection between politics and fashion. And the more I looked at politicians and the way that they interacted with the public, the more it be became sort of clear to me that there was this kind of performance. They used their clothing, their appearance, as a kind of costuming. And, you know, it was, really stands out, I think, during campaigns because you have politicians going into different situations where, you know, their number one pursuit is to connect with those voters. And so you see them going into, uh, you know, union halls. And, of course, the first thing that they want to do is take off their suit jacket and roll up their sleeves which I kind of describe as the universal sign for I'm about to be very sincere now. I always feel that, you know, my first obligation is, is to my readers. You know, to be able to write about the fashion industry is particularly intriguing to me because I was never a kid who was enamored with fashion. I never really thought of myself as particularly fashionable and so, the, that world was sort of distant and not really connected to me. So I think in some ways maybe that's why I cover it in the way that I do because I feel a bit of empathy for those people who sort of look at fashion and admire it but feel like it maybe isn't quite for them or it's sort of mysterious. Um, and I think it also allows me to bring a certain degree of, of skepticism um, to my stories, um, but not cynicism, I hope. And um, I mean, I think creative people are just really fascinating people because just understanding how their mind works is extraordinary.